let's uh, let's move on here. Again, this is just me trying to clean out some of my emails. Uh, the next one here is from Excel. This is actually reoccurring from last week. Um, we I didn't answer it all the way through, so uh, I'm gonna do that. Thank you, Alex, for for reaching out and letting me know about that. Again, if you like these videos, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. And again, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching these videos and you kind of like them, it would mean the world to me if you would do that. Um, so if we go back into to the the list here of the latest videos, um, we did a video last week that was how to create a custom cam tool within um, within Fusion 360. And this was uh, this was Alex. Um, who sent me an email and says, hey, how do we create a custom tool? And uh, we ended up creating a custom tool that in the end we could kind of simulate that custom tool kind of running down um, running down the part here. But I didn't answer Alex's question all the way. Um, so I should have read a little bit further down. Sorry if I'm not reading these emails all the way into, into the detail. But pretty much what Alex was trying to do was to, if I understand your email correctly, Alex, <coughs> excuse me, is to actually take this T-slot cutter and cut down in a piece of wood, so kind of like sinking it down, and then kind of cut a blind T-slot hole and then get out of it again. So kind of like just plunging down and go out. I'm assuming you're doing this in wood because I couldn't imagine that you could actually do this in steel. Um, I could be wrong. You know, I'm definitely not the 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 best world's best CNC machine guy out there. But let me just draw up what it is that I think that Alex wants because I think a lot of people would love this. I can show you a couple of cool tricks. So um, I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to draw it and I'm going to use a center rectangle, Alex. Just I'm going to make sure that. My audience is in center to show this, just to make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna do a center rectangle, and uh, let's make it like 300 by 100 wide, maybe. That should be okay. Press Q for press pull, and let's extrude this up. Doesn't really matter. 50, 50 millimeters up. Doesn't really matter. Now here's the thing, um, and this can actually be kind of helpful when you're trying to model. If you're if you're a machinist or whatever, like CNC program or something like that, many times modeling things up the same way that you you would machine it can be helpful. So um, if I go in here and I think, all right, I'm gonna plunge down with this T-slot cutter. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the top face here. C for circle, and uh, that's gonna be a 50 millimeter diameter that was what that cutter was that we created in last week's video again if you go and look for the custom tool you'll find it i'm gonna hit uh, q for press pull and i'm gonna go down like minus 20 20 millimeters okay so we kind of like just have a hole here if you have used fusion more than a few weeks you should feel pretty good about this um now here's the cool thing i wanted to show you a, a neat thing here um so so this is the the tool just kind of like going down in Z, just plunging right down. Now we're actually going to have it moving in, I guess that would be the Y direction here. If we spin it around a little bit, we got the Y axis, so kind of like go moving down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a sketch. And uh, by the way, you see how I can't select the planes because they're kind of like um, the, the block is in the way here. Now many times, and I do this too, you might just go up here and click one of the faces up here and find it but you can actually if you hover where the plane is now you can see that the side of the block is selected but if you hold down your left mouse button for just two seconds then this little dialog, dialog box comes up and now you'll see that I can find it right there click on that and it's ready to start a new sketch now here's a tool that I don't use often enough over when you start a sketch now remember just to move apart here we're actually sketching right there inside of the center of that hole, right? If you didn't know this, there is over here in your sketch palette, when you are in a sketch, a slice command. See what that just did? It's kind of like just slices. Um, it, it, it doesn't do any, it's all visual. This doesn't do it physical, but it just makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing when you check that little, tick that little box there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go normal to again. And uh, I'm going to select P for project, 
and I'm just going to select that in half of this hole here. Hit OK. That will give me uh, the endpoints here. So now I'm going to do the bottom side of the cutter, and that's going to be 10 millimeters tall. That's how big that, that cutter is. And um, if I just hit OK, then the box can kind of move back and forth. We could do something like a vertical constraint from this point to this point. Boom. So then we have that there. And um, then we're going to do the shaft. Now, Alex, when you're doing this, I, I'm assuming that you have some kind of a cutting edge on the shaft. Or you're going to have problems, but maybe you do. Um, so let me just go over here and draw a, a rectangle out here in space. This is another thing I many times do. And it doesn't really matter how tall I make it, maybe 25. The width, I remember, was 20. So this is something I also many times do. I just draw my rectangle out here in the center, and then I can use something like the midpoint constraint to put it where it belongs. Huh. Hope that's this, I hope this is useful. Um, so now we kind of have that profile of that T-slot cutter, and now if I hit the Q for press pull, I can select these two sections here, and I can kind of make that cut that the T-slot cutter will do, right? So I'm going to go in about 80 millimeters cut right there and uh, if i hit okay then you can kind of see what we got here so we plunge this down with a t cutter and now we are cutting along y but actually of course it's, it's a round cutter so the end here is not right so let me just do that so i'm going to open another sketch on that face and I'm going to use that slice command again because now I actually, when I remember about it, I actually like that because now I can kind of see this here. I'm going to use the P for project again. I'm going to steal um, kind of like when I go in here and select this, I can kind of select um, this profile here like that so I can get that line there. Actually, I don't know if I have to. I just really want this line right here. Um, and then if we hit L for line, we can draw a line down to that end point there because that, having just added that line, should actually let me go into a revolve and select that half, only half of it, revolve around that vertical line I just did, and that will make that half of the half of the cutter there. If, if that went too fast, I apologize. Um, go back and watch... This will come out as a recording. Go back and watch that recording. If I go into the tools and into inspect and do a section analysis, maybe that will help. Right? So so if we just do that for a second, so the cut is going to cut down and it's going to cut over to the end piece here. Uh, so this is kind of the profile of what we want the cutter to do. Let me just turn that off again. Okay. Um, so far, so good, Alex. So now we want to use that T color to, to plunge down and machine over. And my one original thought could be if I just went back into uh, to a sketch tool and draw a sketch on the bottom here and hit alpha line and draw a line from the center point of the big hole to kind of the center point of the little hole. This is kind of what I want the tool to actually... Um, move down so now if we go into manufacture to our cam and i'm just gonna make a setup and this is why if you wonder before why i drew everything in the centers because now my origin is i don't have to mess with that um you could think about going in and use something like the trace tool here so the trace let me just do that again that was a little fast on the 2d go and click trace and now, if I go and select that tool, and I still have that from last week's video, so Alex's uh, form mill, what has like this T-shaped cover here. If I select that, and I go to our curve selection, and I select this edge, and hit OK, let's look at what we get. We are almost there. If I go in and simulate this, and I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit in speed, it's gonna plunge down, it's gonna machine over, and this is everything I think Alex wants, except the last thing. What is that is actually wrapping out of the... See, this could be all good going up again. The, the going up is not good. 
Can you see that? It's machining now. It's all good. Going up is not good. And I'm, again, I'm assuming, Alex, that you have some cutting edge on this. Or you're going to have to machine that machine yet first. Now, if, if this is true, if this is what you really want, except the Z-axis move up, um, then I'm assuming you're machining in wood. Because I, I could not imagine that you could do this in steel. I just, I just couldn't picture that. Um, where the chips would go and all that stuff, um, I think that could be, could be an issue. Now, if and it's important to remember too, I think, um, and and I know I say this in in a lot of these, but the KM inside of Fusion 360 is based on metal subtractive standard CNC kind of, uh, of milling. Um, so, so I think that's important. So when, if you are working with wood or other materials, you're kind of aware of that because you might have to think a little bit different in those, um, in those materials. Now, if this was steel, um, the way I would do this was I would actually use a cutter that was smaller, uh, than what you're trying to machine. Because like I said before, there's a couple of things when it's steel, first of all, you need to get rid of the material. You would also need, um, normally you want to lead in and lead out where the cutter actually comes on and off the cut. And just to show that, um, instead of making the tool, change the tool, because that was kind of like created already, I'm just going to do it with, um, I want to do it with making the hole a little bit bigger. I'm going to, but Alex, I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you how you can, we could cheat and do this with a trace tool, but let me just show the other one first and hopefully i'm not making things too confusing so i'm going to just suppress suppress the the trace tool for a second and let me just go back into our design and let me just change a couple of these because you would have to have either a cutter that is a little bit smaller or of course something that is a little bit bigger than your your cutter so i'm just going to go in here and i'm really just going to change a couple of these dimensions here because fusion actually knows um where and where not there's material um so let me also just change the width of this so let's make everything a little bit bigger the way i would machine this uh, normally would be probably just using a 2d contour tool path still use the same cutter that we had before but now we've made everything bigger um, then I will just se select that bottom edge there and let's just hit OK and see what we get. Um, so when we do that, you will see that we get a warning on it. And whenever you're getting a warning on a toolpath, right click and hit, and hit the show lock. And it will give you a console was machined because the given lead parameters would cause collision. See, this is one of the cool things about Fusion and being inside of a solid modeling tool. It actually knows it will collide. So let me just go into the 2D contour, hit edit, go to the last tab, the linking tab, and let me just turn the leads in and leads out off. And let's try again. And now you will actually see we don't get a warning. And if I click here, you will see that we got some bytes. So it tells us it's doing something. So let's simulate that. <laughs> it plunges right down where we don't want it to. Okay. So let's go back in, right click, hit edit. Go back to the linking tab. Now down here, you can actually do an entry position. So let's select right there, hit OK, and let's see what we get now. So this would actually probably be a better tool path. Now, you will normally have a lead in, lead out on your parts. Um, and that lets you do cutter compensation in the controller of the machine but you will actually find on most of your machines, you can actually go fairly small, at least my experience, you can go fairly small in your, your lead in, lead out. So the default here was five millimeters. If I change to a half a millimeter, you will probably see it will actually let us do that. But what that will do if I zoom in is it will, the green will give you like a little lead in and lead out. Um, that is, at least if it's steel, is probably a little bit better way to do that. And again, Alex, I'm assuming certain things. I'm assuming that you have a cutting edge on the flute here. Or you would have to have, remove this here with a, with a previous operation, what you maybe already have considered. 
Um, but this here would be a better tool pad. I do get a, a red collision going up. But the fact that it, it has a lead in, lead out, and, and it's smaller than the exit opening, but the material may be going somewhere, something like that. Okay, so I, I got that out of my system. Uh, let's go back to the tracing operation again, though, because I do want to show you something that maybe is useful. Um, if we go back in and we, we unsuppress that and just regenerate it again, still the same thing we have right now in that tool path that if I simulate it, it's going to go down and go on and then it's going up. And, and this is why I think you want to get rid of. You want to get rid of the up per se. Well, you could actually do this in the code. If you, if you had to do this every single day, maybe this is not the right way to do it, but if you just making a few of these, we could right click here and go into the post processor. Now, with great, with great power come great responsibility, but <laughs> I'm gonna show you anyways. Uh, let's change the name. I don't know why we oh, have Nathan in here. Let's change that. So Alex is, I'm just gonna post this code out here. And of course, this is a tiny little piece of code, but to do that trace tool path, this is what the machine needs. And when you get past the G54, turn cooling on, turn heights off, it goes, it, it plunges down in this line, and then it goes that Y 80 millimeters right here. That is actually when it's traveling across there. And then when it comes, whoops, let's see if I can move it down a little bit like that. So this line here, line 18, Y 80, that is when it's traveling to there. Then you will see the next one is Z up. Well, Z up means it's just gonna travel up for four millimeters. What we could do, and then it's gonna travel up another 15 on top of that. What we could do was we could go in here and click on this, hit enter and enter our own line. And if we here wrote Y zero, because that's where it started out from was zero zero. That actually means that now it's gonna go up and then it's gonna go back again. Now you will not see it inside of Fusion. You will see this on your machine. And you might even consider if you if you go, if we make a line between those two, the Y80 and the Y0, if you did something like G04, that's a dwell, and we did like P500, that would, depending again on your machine, that will give you a four, a half a second, a G04 will give you a dwell of a half a second. So that will just let that cutter go Y80 down and just sit there for a half a second to make sure that it spins around a couple of times before it goes goes back again. So you could get around by doing it um, this way here. I hope this was somewhat useful for somebody. All right, I uh, hope that was useful, Axel. Alex, Axel, sorry, uh, Axel, I hope that was useful. Hope that was useful for somebody. Thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't. And, I love the comments. Um, again, this is just me trying to answer some uh, of my emails here on a, well, what should be a Sunday, but it's actually Monday. It's a holiday. It's all good.